Hey, good morning, friend, and welcome back to our devotional time, our study time in the book of Malachi. Today we're doing just one verse. We're at Malachi chapter 2, verse 17. Let's read it, and then let's apply it. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, In what way have we wearied him? In that you say, Everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or, Where is the God of justice? So that's verse 17. How did the people weary God? By saying that good was evil and evil was good. By mixing mixing good and evil together. Notice notice that that's exactly how they wearied him. You say that everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. No, they're not. No, they're not. I know we're living in a time, we're in the 2020s as I'm filming this. I know we're living in a time when, you know, we're post-truth. Post-truth doesn't, it doesn't matter that that's the societal thing. There is no such thing as a post-truth time. What we are in is a time when people simply don't want to be bound by truth. They don't want to think there is truth. And they think, want to think that anything they do is okay. It's not okay. There is not, we didn't just walk off the map into a, 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 a space, an empty moral space where there's no moral boundaries. There's moral boundaries wherever the human person is. You cannot escape it. One song said, no matter how far I run, I can't get away from me. Well, that's true. You can't get away from you. It's also true. No matter how far you run, you can't get away from morality. You can't get away from right and wrong and judgment. It's not a bad thing either, by the way. It's a good thing. So when we say that everyone is good in the sight of the Lord, that God's happy with it. Whatever wickedness you can think of, God's happy with it. No. Just no, no. Because that would mean that there is no God of justice. But thankfully, there is a God of justice. The God who inspired the writers of Scripture is a God of justice. The Jesus who died on the cross for us is a God of justice. And so we want to be right. God will delight in us, but he won't delight in us when we do evil, when we knowingly do evil, as we saw the other morning. Any man who does this being awake and aware, verse 12. So no, we can't just do whatever we want. It's not okay. But but what's good is that we do have a God of justice. What's good is that there is right and wrong. What's good is that God wants to redeem us, to buy us back, to bring us back from from apostasy from him, to bring us back from sin and wickedness and like all the self-destruction that comes from sin and to come to the heart of Jesus and be healed. So God will do that for us. He was waiting to do that for us. Are you going to let him do it? He is the one physician that we can trust. And in the past year, we a couple of years, it's probably like, I'm not sure if there's any doctor I can trust. I'll tell you one, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray to him. Dear Father in heaven, you are the one thing, the one thing that's left in our world that we can trust. Government, the corporations, physicians. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that mean well in, in all these different categories, politicians. There must be some, Lord, that mean well. But, and yet, Lord, we find that there's nobody we can trust there. There's nobody we can trust like we can trust you. Always, Lord, it's been your plan to do good for us. Always it's been your plan to help us draw close to your kingdom. It's your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So now, Lord, may we take you up on all of your offers. May you transform us. May we not be wicked and join in with the wicked wave of nonsense in the world, Lord, but instead, may we hold the line and help people see the difference between righteousness and sin for their own good, for their own healing, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, There's a deeper part of our plan for today. Let's make sure we do it. God be with you.